Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about event ID number 17 and event ID 18, which both are related to name pipes. Name pipes is a way for a process to talk to another process or to talk across servers using SMB. This method is used just inter-process communication. And we're going to see attackers actually leveraging this when they have one master process injects into another some type of code or function they need to talk inside of that host itself. And also we're going to see this when they're going to be executing what we call SMB pivoting, where they're actually pivoting from one machine to another and they want to use SMB as, as that command and control channel between the host. Uh, this is a very well-known technique that has been used by many adversaries out there. They, uh, mainly, it was uh, came to popularity with Cobalt Strike, and also we're going to find that multiple tools out there that were written by pen testers actually have static name pipes. Some of them are able to modify them, others do not. So it makes for one of those events that we can actually track for that specific presence of a client or a server making or receiving a connection. So there's great value into this. And the way that Windows manages this is that we have, as I mentioned, a client and a server, and it's mentioned actually as a pseudo file that we can write and read from, allowing us to communicate with the client and the server process. So let's take a look at how we would handle this. So here I have an empty configuration file. And the reason that I have an empty configuration file is that I have to be honest with you. When I've tried to implement this in customer environments, this is one of those events where you cannot have a master config that you can apply to every host. This is one of those that I have to really make the point that you need to create unique configurations for your client machines and sometimes for multiple client machines and the same thing for servers and their role. And the main reason for this is that the amount of name pipes that we're going to be seeing is quite high. And just creating a baseline for that makes managing the configuration files well quite complicated. It's quite a bit of noise. And even if we have some fudging there where we are accepting a large amount of name pipes, the amount of name pipes is going to be quite a bit. And it's going to make it harder for us to process. If I go right now here, let's say into PowerShell, and I want to list the name pipes that are available on this machine itself, is I can just do an ls dash dash dot for this host. I'm going to go for pipe. And as you can see, we have quite a bit, and you can see that a lot of them actually have some randomness. We can use contains to kind of like target some of them. Um, the thing is that attackers know this, and they're going to kind of like make their own name pipes look like this valid ones. In fact, if we go over into Sysmon modular, we're going to see that there's a very large amount of excludes for different types of name pipes out there. Let's do something. Let's build one directly from here, from Sysmon Modular. I would actually recommend to grab all of the includes that we have here for known malicious actions and include those. Uh, for example, let's say we want Cobalt Strike. And I'm going to use Cobalt Strike as the example in this case because I have a way to emulate Cobalt Strike here. So I'm going to go here into event filtering, pipe event, include. I'm going to grab this. This is going to be for Cobalt Strike. I'm going to include it here. I'm able to track specifically somebody using Cobalt Strike, and they have not used the artifact kit to hide themselves. So I have it here in my include. And let's say that I, I'm going to have excludes. Um, in fact, let me not get there yet. .txt. Baseline XML. I apply it. This is mon minus C. So we can see the configuration. We have it applied there. So let's emulate 
uh, using a tool from the good guys from MITRE that they use for their attack plans or their emulation plans. I'm going to do name pipe executor. If I do help on it, it's actually going to already have multiple name pipes for different actions so I can emulate and test configurations and test coverage for detections or specifically for Cobalt Strike. Um, it's open source in their GitHub and you can actually just go and modify the source code if you want, which allows for very, it's very nice for testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going just to do dash dash pipe. I'm going to specify uh, number two. I'm going to run it and it's going to mimic the actions of Cobalt Strike from a client and a server inside of the same host. I'm going to open here another window as administrator because I need to be able to open this as my log. So I'm going to look for the connection and also for the client and the server is what I meant. So I'm going to do get sysmon connect name pipe so we can look at the connections here. Here we can see that it triggered. I have my ID here, SMB, Windows Admin Share. So it triggered properly. So it triggered specifically for the application and it was looking for that malicious behavior. So now let's look for or create name pipe. So when the pipe was created to receive the connection itself. And here we can see name pipe server was the one that created it. And we're able to tag specifically by that pipe name. Now, my recommendation here is that if you decide to create a baseline and you're going to be adding a bunch of known good name pipes here, and you're not only going to go target it. This is where knowing the rule order and how Sysmon processes rules and in what order comes into play. Right now here, we can see that I have a rule here. So this is going to be processed first, then all of this filters here. My recommendation is that to have, if you're going to create a baseline and you're going to have a bunch of excludes specifically for your environment is to go here into Sysmon modular Grab the one that is includes for all. Grab this specific rule. Remember, it has to be a rule so we can control that order. If we only have filters, what Sysmon is going to do is going to order those depending on the schema. And I'm going to create a comment here. Capture all. Should always. And I'm making sure that this one's always going to be the last one. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paste this one. I'm going to control A. XML tools. Format XML so it looks nice. And I got to make sure that this specific rule inside of my include is always the last one if I have an exclude. So that way I'm able to tag specific malicious information or malicious name pipes. And in addition to that, I'm able to catch any outlier. Now you do have to be aware of that this is going to be one of those events that you're going to need to work on to filter out all of that noise and you need to revisit. So as you guys can see, this is one of those events that do take quite a bit of work. Uh, it is one where you do need to have that segmentation between operating system and role. So it doesn't get too complicated because one of the biggest caveats or one of the biggest downfalls when it comes to security is actually complexity. The more complex something is, the more is uh, those chances of it breaking or somebody doing a bad configuration or committing a mistake and breaking stuff. And that is why more complexity is not that good. Uh, and 
just to address that complexity, it's why we're going to have multiple configurations for multiple roles, multiple operating systems. And also we need to have a process in place where we're going to be going in and we're going to need to add, modify that configuration as new versions of software get added into our environment, as updates happen and name types change. So as you can see, it is one of those that initially my recommendation is to be targeted. And then as you build out your configurations and you build out your experience, then you can move to that role where you have some targeting, you capture all of the outliers, and then you exclude the normal behavior because now you have some experience and you're able to deal with that new level of complexity. So I hope that you guys found this information useful. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.